You're looking at about a 40 yard field goal for John Hall to cap off what would be an unbelievable comeback. Every sports writer will tell you that we don't root for teams, we root for stories. I was there. I got up and I left. I'll never leave a game again in the third quarter. It seemed to be one of those games where it just wasn't my night, but fortunately, I played four quarters. The old Yogi Berra phrase, the game ain't over till the fat lady sings. The Monday Night Miracle is one of the greatest games in NFL history. It was just one of those things where you couldn't do anything right, so you couldn't do anything wrong. If a team's head's not right, they're screwed. It's too much of a, a gladiator sport. And if somebody's not ready to go on any given night, that can happen really quickly. Then they kind of get their pride hurt, and they can come back really quickly. I think it's one of those sports you play till the final whistle. You've seen it too many times. It gets too uh, man on man out there. And so I would say until that final whistle, you don't know. It is a beautiful October night in the Big Apple. It was a great time for New York and New York sports. The Subway Series was dominating everything. You had the Subway Series going on. It was Monday Night Football. And there was an electricity in there. I've been to Monday night games as a kid, Jet Giant games, scalping tickets down Route 17. Any chance you get to play on Monday night, you're the only game in town everybody's watching, it's uh, special. New York was just on fire for a winning season. It's an excited Jets crowd. There was a lot of anticipation personally for me. It was my first year coming back to my hometown. Tonight is the second time that Jay Fiedler and Al Groh have met. The first time was two years ago. Fiedler was 26 years old. He was an out-of-work quarterback struggling to make it in the NFL. Groh was an assistant with the Jets, and he talked to Fiedler as a favor. And here's what he told him. He said, you've got to be realistic. No one's seen you play in two years. Perhaps what you should do is give up your dreams of playing in the NFL and put that Dartmouth education to good use. I kind of took it a different way and figured that it was one more person that I was going to go out and defy the odds again. Battle for the top spot in the AFC East. It's a hyped game. They're 5-1. and one. They're going into this national TV game. People were excited, and that lasted literally two minutes after the game started. It's in this play. Oh, it is Leslie Shepard. Touchdown. They just laid an egg. Get on the you know, a lot of teams early in the season kind of underestimated our offense. Looks to cut back and does across the 40. And Scott Frost misses him down the sideline. Lamar Smith going in for a touchdown. Is anybody going to tackle anybody here? I was let out of the building when those guys hit those big plays as a rookie. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, well, how are they hitting all these home runs? We can't seem to get nothing going on our side of the ball. It is off the fingertips of... Coles, the rookie out of Florida State. We just could not get anything going. There was a lot of three and out. Huge play. Second down and seven. That pass was thrown to Corbett. That pass is not the way. Sometimes you just don't have it. And we didn't have it that game. Steps up in the pocket. Dumps it short to Curtis Martin. He's down after a three-yard game. And the Jets still do not have a first down. It was about as bad a start as you could imagine on national TV. Right now, the Jets look off. Miami, everything they did work. You see OG jump over that guy? Whatever we did, didn't. And then he throws, and it is intercepted by Sam Madison. There was a lot of booze, a lot of booze. <laughs> we are Jeff fans. When things are going wrong, you know, we'll gut you. Back to throw, looks right, throws deep down the right side, and it's intercepted. On the pass intended for Lavernius Coles, Patrick Sertain gobbles it up. This is a miserable night, not only for Ted Laverty, but for this entire Jet team so far. <laughs> Boy, I like a miss. From an opposing sideline, it's great to hear that. That's how it is. <laughs> I've booed when I was a kid growing up, and when you go out there and lay an egg, you should expect that. 
One of the things that stands out very vividly in my mind was at some point during the second quarter, uh, we made a first down. And they give it to Anderson, and he gets the first down. The crowd started cheering, and I thought, uh, this is kind of weird. They're cheering about a first down. As I learned, that was our first first down of the game, and that's why they were cheering. So it wow. takes 23 minutes, but the Jets finally move the chain. By halftime, you saw a lot of the stands starting to empty out, and honestly, who could blame them? Testaverde pulls back from center, throws it over the middle, caught, touchdown! Touchdown to Wayne Krebeck! Oh, okay, so they're not gonna get shut out, so they did something right. 23. I remember coming in at halftime and, and just telling the offense, let's not worry about winning this game, but let's not get embarrassed here and get blown out. Al and I used to split right after the games and go to the airport. So we were probably thinking about uh, getting in a golf cart, going down, getting in a car, going to the plane. Al would have, uh, Al would have had a, a Johnny Walker and I would have had a Stoli at that point. At halftime, my story was essentially done. It was the story was told. The Jets embarrassed themselves on national TV, getting blown out by the Dolphins. Story's done at halftime. It takes a lot for me to get down on the Jets. I think we're in every game until it's over, pretty much. One thing the Jets have been proficient at this season is coming from behind. They'll have to do it again tonight. I hung out through halftime. Miami came out in the third quarter, put up seven and I did it. I got up and I left the game. Fans are leaving, a lot of empty seats. It's Monday night football and we've just been embarrassed. Oh, they're heading for the exits though. Where they going though? I did notice that they were leaving and in my mind, I said, you're leaving too early. Yeah, baby. Yes, sir. They ain't coming back on us. No, come on now. No. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in town? This is fantastic, I mean, to watch this game. It is the more excitement than any motion picture. I don't think you pronounced my name right. I'll tell you one thing, Wayne Krobeck is going to pull it off. I saw it, and uh, it's one of, one of the greatest things I've ever heard. I think, usual, as usual, the Jets are going to come from behind. You will see. He was out there on that one. I just don't imagine things like that happening. I think the Dolphins have to be terminated. I mean, who comes back from 30 to 7 in the fourth quarter? And with a whole quarter to go, this game is over. We're going to try to do something big to get the momentum back. Ready? For Coles. And does he make the catch? He does. How did he catch that one? The Jets scored a touchdown, and, you know, you throw a line in your story. No big deal, no really need to change anything. And then they score again. There is Testaverde, off the clay fake, a little cross in the end zone, caught, touchdown. So it's like, okay, we'll, we'll put a paragraph in there now. Vinny was a streaky passer. Once he hit one, then he was able to just keep it going and going and going. He felt the momentum shift. Well, the crowd has been cut in half, Al, but those who stayed are reinvigorated. But oddly enough, as soon as the fins tasted blood, there was chum in the water, as they say. In the fourth quarter, we started getting a lot more conservative offensively. Inside handoff, Thomas, so it's three and out. The people who left the stadium were trying to get back in. The energy was building. You've seen people coming back into the stadium late in the game. And the stadium was getting fuller and louder. Yes, I mean, kept the door open. <laughs> And all of a sudden, what looked to be a walk in the park for Dave Wanstead is anything but. Offense getting complacent. We're starting to bend a little bit. we got to pick it up. Everything we call worked. We are calling the same plays over and over, and it kept working, so we stuck with it. Dan Henning, our offense coordinator, told me, hey, call your plays, go no huddle. 33. <laughs> and that is caught by Corbett. One of the, the weirdest things I've ever seen, uh, him and Wayne in the huddle drawing routes on each other's chest. He could see what I was seeing and always getting to the ball in the right spot. I think we had a feeling that we could score every time we got the ball. He's magnificent right now. It seemed like every play they had was a positive play. Hey, offense, we need it right here, man. We need it bad. In the press box, there was a lot of angst just because we were doing a lot of backtracking, a lot of rewriting. There's Fiedler under center. Cox has got him and sacks him back at the five-yard line. 
Now I'm like, uh-oh, this is the snowball gaining momentum here. I'll tell you one thing, Wayne Krobeck is going to pull it off. Through the air, Wayne was our star, and we knew uh, any time for us to have a chance to win, Wayne had to be the guy to get us going. Vinny and Wayne Krobeck had an unbelievable chemistry together. Vinny could just throw it almost blindly, knowing where Wayne would be. Here's Vinny, going to the end zone. Oh! Can he make the catch? Make the catch? Yes! <laughs> Gravet is magic. Yeah, quite the catch. When you're in that situation and things are going like that, you just feel like you can do anything, and that tied it up. All I was thinking to myself was, I don't know how we did this, but thank you, we got it done. And for those Jets fans who left this stadium about an hour ago and whose radios are broken in their car, have we got news for you. It's even in score, but it's not even in emotion. The Jets are way ahead right now. Let's forget about everything that's happened, and we got to rise up and play. Exactly. Like we can play. Chris Hall with the kickoff, running left to the 15. We had a nice uh, return. He's to the 45, to the 50. We wanted to really get aggressive again. That snowball is moving and it's getting bigger and bigger and all of a sudden Beadler. And he's going for six into the end zone and wide open is Shepard. Touchdown Miami. We thought that that was going to be the, the, the nail in the coffin. I had a five this is the way it was going to play out tonight. Yeah, you did. It was a little bit deflating, but Again, you put all this energy and this effort into this great comeback, and, and you just know deep down, if you just keep working, keep fighting, that some more good things will happen. When your quarterback has that kind of confidence, that's when you can't be stopped. Still time on the clock, so we knew we had an opportunity as long as we had Vinny. Vinny with a 211 yard. We've come this far, we gotta finish this thing. Now you've got a gigantic play coming up. It's the two minute warning and it's fourth and one. So it comes down to this. Benny throwing and stopped at the one is Anderson, but he has the first down. He took a shot. Did I see that graphic correct? 19 first downs in this quarter? That's unbelievable. Meanwhile, second down and goal from the two. 76 is eligible. I don't know about you, when I'm watching a football game and they put an offensive lineman in and they tell the ref that he's eligible, I assume they've got to play for him. Of course, we're down near the end zone. Everybody expects Curtis Martin to get the football. You put plays in like that for a situation where no one sees it coming. Weeks prior, we practiced it a couple of times, but uh, you know, you never expect to really use it. Took a lot of guts to call, but um, it was one of the worst catches I've ever seen in the history of football. Fake to Martin, then a dump, and it is juggled and caught by Jumbo Elliott. That Jumbo, they had the hands team in. The tackle winds up as an eligible receiver at the end. Why go out of your way to say Jumbo Elliott is eligible unless there must be some chance of going there? The look on his face, too, when he stood up and looked up into the crowd and his eyes bulging out of his head, you know, like he caught the ball. He was a backup lineman, so he was not playing. He was not warmed up. He says, I get in the huddle, and he goes, they call that play. He goes, oh, my God, they're going to throw me the football here. I was still surprised when he was actually running the route that he was actually running it. He wore these big white hamburger gloves. He's wearing massive old lineman gloves. So for him to catch that ball in that moment with that scenario, it's gotta be one of the greatest plays in Jets history. It's the first catch of his career. He's played 173 games. Well, you can't shut up that forever. <laughs> After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. He had reached the end of regulation. Are you ready for some OT? At the New York Daily News, they were literally holding the presses for this game to end. And back in those days, 
to hold the presses for an event was, was something really unusual. We'll play a 15 minute overtime period. First team that scores wins. You know, we were all on sidelines, exhausted. Everybody was spent. Yes. Yes. Miami won the toss. We We have all the momentum at that time, and so I believe the pressure is pretty much on them. And it's intercepted by Coleman, and then he fumbles, and Miami's going to wind up getting the ball back. Lost down, right? It's the first down, right? For us? First down. First down. Oh, this call goodness. is sick. Well, you know, you get only so many chances. Best thing you want to do is go through that kind of comeback and just fall short at the end. Marcus Coleman makes the two interceptions in overtime. How does that happen? Come on! Move the chain, baby! Move the chain! Big third and three. Caught it and started going. It is I kept going, and I was really, really tired. And you see when someone hits me, I just kind of lay there. I knew we were in field goal position, so I knew I did my job. You're looking at about a 40-yard field goal for John Holt to cap off what would be an unbelievable comeback. Good snap. Kick away. Jets win. Miracle. Uh, miraculous. It's Tuesday, October 24th, in the day after the biggest comeback victory in Jets history over the Dolphins. Oh, God, please. And Daddy left the game. An unheard of 30 points in the first Left the, the game and game. missed right the there. rest. Left the game. I've, I've, I've sat through thunder. But you left the important game. I was torn because, you know what, I should have been there. I don't think a fan who was at that game would ever leave a game early again. I'm not gonna say I'm glad to be a part of that history. It was a game I'd rather forget. When something like that happens, you need a little bit of luck and you need some help from above. During this comeback, there were no cheap touchdowns. Everything we got, we had to work for, and uh, that's what makes it so special. Everything just had to fall in the right place at the right time for us during that fourth quarter and overtime for us to win that football game. So it was the Monday Night Miracle.